Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the Granny Square Market Bag, which you can see here in the photo. I've also brought a little bit of my sample for you to see. And uh, you can also head on over to my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and you'll see some more photos of this market bag there as well. So this is the Granny Square Market Bag. It is uh, three pieces that are then seamed together. Uh, two uh, side panels, which are your Granny Squares, are the same. And then one piece is worked for the, uh, for the short sides here and the bottom. And then your handles are continuous handles that um, are worked in your final rounds of your bag. So this is the Granny Square Market Bag. It's a fairly large market bag. It measures approximately 17 by 19 inches laid flat. It's about uh, four inches wide as well. It's a great market bag, uh, good to stuff whatever you need, uh, whether it be at the market or to the beach or to the park. It's an easy market bag to work. As mentioned, it's worked in three panels and today I've worked mine and I'm going to show you it in five different colors. For my bag, I like to use a 100% cotton. So I'll be using this Pima Cotton by Lion Brand Yarns. And I'll be using the colors Mademoiselle for my color A. Color B will be Stone. Color C will be this purple rain cloud color. Color D will be my pink mulberry. And then color E is the darker gray pewter color. It's a worsted weight yarn in each ball. There's about 186 yards. So you're going to need one ball of each color for the blanket. You won't use all uh, of each ball. Uh, sorry for the bag, but um, uh, it's good to have one ball of each color on hand. So that's the yarn I'm going to be using. I'm also going to be using a five millimeter crochet hook and there'll be links for both of these items in the description of this video. Also in the description of the video, you will find a link to the direct uh, written free crochet pattern on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, while you're here, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. It's updated weekly and take a look around. I'm sure you'll find something else that uh, you will like. The first part that we're going to work of our granny square market bag are the large granny squares that form the front and the back. And uh, so what we're going to do, they worked in five, your five different colors. I'm going to start off with my color A here, the Mademoiselle color. You'll want to start by making a slip knot and the granny squares are worked in rounds. So what you're going to do is you're going to begin by chaining five and then joining with a slip stitch into the first stitch to form a ring. Once you have your ring formed, we're going to begin working round one. For round one, you will chain three and then work two more double crochet stitches just into the center of your ring. Chain two and this chain two will form your corner space. Next, work three double crochets all into the center of your ring. And then chain two for another corner space. You're going to repeat that twice more. So three double crochet stitches into the center of your ring. chain two and then three more double crochet stitches into the center of your ring. Chain two once more 
And in this pattern, your chain three at the beginning of each round always counts as a stitch. So once you've chained two, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that starting chain three. You can then go ahead and fasten off. That's your round one. For round two, you're going to take your next color. For me, I'm going to be using this gray, lighter gray. And you're then going to, with a slip stitch, join into any of the corner spaces. With a slip stitch, join in any of the corner spaces. You're then going to chain three, which counts as a double crochet stitch. For round two, then double crochet, two more stitches, so work two more double crochets all into that same chain two space chain two and then work three more double crochets all into that same chain two space. Next chain one then skipping the next three double crochets down in your previous round you're going to work into the next corner space and into that next chain two corner space, work three double crochets. Chain two and three double crochets. chain one and you're now going to repeat that twice more. So skipping those three double crochets into the next corner space work three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets. chain one, skip the next three double crochets and repeat three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets all into that final corner space. You can then chain one once you've come all the way around and join with a slip stitch into the top of your chain three and then fasten off. If you're someone who likes to weave in your ends as you go, you can go ahead and weave in your ends. That brings you to the end of your round two. For round three, taking your color C, you're going to join with a slip stitch into each any corner stitch. And you're then going, once I tighten it up here, you're then going to chain three and work two more double crochets into that first corner stitch in the corner space, chain two, and work three more double crochet stitches all into that same corner space. Next, chain one, skip the next three double crochets, and then into your next chain one space, work three double crochet stitches.
chain one into your skip the next three double crochets into your corner space work three double crochet stitches chain two and three more double crochet stitches chain one skip the next three double crochets and work three double crochet stitches into the next chain one space chain one skip the next three and into your corner stitch work three double crochets chain two and three more double crochet stitches you're going to continue to repeat that uh, all the way around for one more corner there chain one skip three three double crochets in your chain one space Chain one over to your corner again, work three double crochets. Chain two and three double crochets. chain one three double crochets in your next chain one space chain one and join with a slip stitch into your top of your chain three granny squares are fun to work and they're a great way if you have extra yarn scraps at home of uh, especially cotton for this market bag a great way to use them up and then fasten off and that brings you to the end of your round three for your round four you're going to uh, join your color D and you're going to continue working in a similar pattern that you just worked so join with your slip stitch working your corner spaces and your chain one spaces in the same way that you worked them for the final round so into that first corner two double crochet stitches chain two and three more double crochets chain one skip the next three double crochets into the next chain three uh, chain one space work three double crochet stitches repeat that chain one three double crochets in your next chain one and that brings you to your next corner into your next corner work three double crochets chain two and three double crochets and you're just going to repeat that all the way around your granny square as you did before and then at the end chain one and join with a slip stitch into that first stitch so once you have worked your round four uh, you finished with your color D you're going to go ahead and uh, fasten on in any corner your color E and you're going to continue to work the rounds of your granny square until you have a total of 15 rounds for your granny square uh, so for mine I ended off on my color E here on the dark gray uh, in the photo.
but you want to work until you have a total of 15 rounds. It'll be a fairly large granny square. And, um, and then you can fasten off, weave in all your ends, and you're going to work an, another granny square the exact same way for the other side. So right now I invite you to go ahead, finish off this one large granny square, uh, work your second granny square, and then meet me back here and we'll make our sides and bottom and then learn how to join them together and finish the handles. Now once you have worked your large granny square, you'll have a piece that looks like this. We're going to want to prepare the granny square to attach our sides and bottoms. So you could have fastened off and woven inner ends, or actually you can just chain one, join with the slip stitch, and then start where you've left off. But what you wanna do for your rounds 16 and then around round 17, you're going to chain one and then single crochet into the same stitches joining and then into each stitch all the way around. When you come to your corner space, work three single crochet stitches in your corner space, and then continue around the next side, working one single crochet in each stitch. You're going to do that for two rounds. Every time you come to a corner stitch or a corner space, work three single crochets into that corner, uh, a single single crochet into your chain one spaces and then uh, a single crochet into each stitch. In your second round you're just going to single crochet into each stitch all the way around working three in that corner space. At the end of each round you can join with a slip stitch chain one and then continue on. At the end of your second round, you can then join with a slip stitch in that first stitch and go ahead and fasten off. So continue working two rounds of single crochet stitches around each of your granny squares and then meet me back here. Okay, so once you have worked your two granny square sides, your finished bag should look like this. You'll have final two rounds of single crochets there worked around your bag. You're now ready to start the bottom and the sides of your bag. So you're going to set those two squares aside. Uh, you can then take your color E and the sides and the bottom of the bag are worked in rows. What you're going to do is begin by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain with a total of 198 chains. So you can go ahead, it is a long chain, but you're going to chain 198 chains. Now this is, uh, once you've worked your first double crochet there, it's the enough chains to make enough double crochets to work along three sides of your granny square. So if you've changed the size of your granny square for this bag, uh, that's, uh, that's how I'm measuring the sides and the bottom here. So go ahead, chain 198 chains, and then meet me back here. Once you have chained your 198 chains, you're then going to work the first row by working one double crochet into the fourth chain from your hook, and then into each chain stitch all the way across. The chain three at the beginning does count as a double crochet stitch, so you're going to treat it as such. Double crochet into that fourth chain and then into each chain all the way across. At the end of your row one, you can chain three, which counts as a double crochet, and turn your work. For row two, three, four, and five, 
for the next four rows. You're going to double crochet into the next stitch and in each stitch all the way across working your final double crochet stitch into the top of that chain three. So you're going to in the end have a total of five rows of double crochet stitches at the end of each row, chain three, turn your work and then double crochet in the next stitch and each stitch all the way across. So for the rest of your bottom and sides, go ahead, work those rows, five rows in total of double crochet stitches and uh, then meet me back here and we will start joining our bag pieces together. Okay, so once you have worked your five rows of double crochet stitches, you'll have your bottom and side piece, piece. It should be one long piece that looks like this. We're then going to want to start joining all of this together. So I'm just going to pull my camera back a little, sorry about that, a little tiny bit here, just so you can see it a little bit easier what I'm going to do. What you're going to do is you're going to take your uh, one of your panels, uh, one of your granny square pieces, and you're going to take your side piece and you're going to match the corners together with your wrong sides facing in. You're then going to join into the corner stitch through both thicknesses with a slip stitch and you can just join um, with your color E or whatever color you choose really but I'm going to continue using my color E. I have my wrong sides together join with a slip stitch into your corner. Now to join the sides and the bottom together you're simply going to work a single crochet stitch working through both thicknesses all the way around. So single crochet in each stitch. It's important that you make sure you're not skipping any stitches either on the sides or the front uh, and working in each stitch all the way down the side uh, of your bag and then across the bottom and then up the other side. You're always working one single crochet in each individual stitch all the way along. Okay, so once you have single crocheted in each stitch all the way around your three sides, you now have uh, your sides and your bottom attached to one side or one of the granny squares on your market bag. You'll then want to attach the other granny square. So you're going to take it and again you want your wrong side which is the one here with my ends still attached and you're going to want it facing in so your wrong sides together. Once again you're going to join uh, your side of your market bag to the granny square panel matching corner for corner. Taking your color E once again into that corner stitch, join with a slip stitch, working through both thicknesses. Chain one and then continuing to work in through both thicknesses. Once again, you're going to single crochet along the side and the bottom and then along the other side of your market bag. Uh, and uh, then you can either fasten off or you can leave it attached and you will begin working around the top of your bag, which I will show you. So once uh, you can see there, there's the two attached. So work single crochet through both thicknesses 
uh, along the three sides of your market bag, joining the sides to the granny square panels. And then meet me back here and we will work the top of our market bag. Once you have joined your side and bottom piece to both sides of your market bag, you'll have your opening up here at the top and you're then ready to work the top of your bag and your handles. The handles on the top of the bag are worked in one piece and they are worked in rounds. So if you fastened off, you can join with a slip stitch in any, uh, or in the corner, the top right corner of the front of your bag. Or if you haven't fastened off yet, that's great too. You can just simply begin by chaining one. You're then going to work a single crochet stitch into each stitch all the way across the top of your market bag uh, of the one panel. So single crochet all the way across the top of the front side of your market bag. When you come to that short end of your market bag, you're going to single crochet, so do a little jump into the short end side of your bag, and you're going to work eight single crochet stitches just evenly along the top of your bag. You can space them out a little bit. If um, you can increase or decrease that number, you'll just have to make sure that you make note of it and then make the adjustments later on. So I've worked eight. Uh, there's four, five, six, seven, and I'm just going to go down into the stitch here to work my final one and make it a little stronger, eight. So work eight stitches along the top of your bag or along the short side of your bag. You'll then have come to the next granny square panel and you're then going to single crochet into each stitch. I'm just going to work in some ends as I go. Uh, single crochet into each stitch all the way across again. Once you come to the other short side of your bag, you'll once again evenly work eight single crochet stitches along that opposite short side and join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. So you can go ahead, work these final two sides, and then meet me back here. At the end of this round one, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. Do not turn your work, but chain one. You're now going to, for rounds two and three, work one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. When you come back to the first stitch, join with a slip stitch, chain one and chain one. So you can go ahead, work rounds two and three, a single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around, joining at the end of each round with a slip stitch in the first stitch and then a chain one. There's no need to turn at the end of each round. So just keep going in the same direction. Okay, so once you have worked your rounds one, two, and three, you'll have a nice uh, firm edging there of single crochet stitches all the way around the top of your market bag. What we're going to do now, the next five rounds or so, are going to be our handle rounds. And what you're going to do is your yarn is still attached, you're going to chain one. For round four, you're going to single crochet in the first stitch, the same stitch as joining, and in each of the next six single crochet stitches. So you'll have seven all together. There's two, three, four, five, six, 
and seven. Once you have your seven worked, you're going to then loosely chain 70 stitches and you want them to be fairly loose because we're going to be working in them uh, in the next round. So go ahead and chain 70 chains. Once you have chained 70 chain stitches on your bag, you're then going to skip the next 49 stitches along the top of your bag. And I've already marked mine here. So once you've counted 49 stitches into the next stitch, you're going to begin working and you're going to work one single crochet in each of the next 20 two stitches. So there's one, two, three, five, and there's ten, fifteen, you're coming around to the other side of your bag now. There's 20, 21, and 22. Once you've single crocheted 22 stitches, you can then chain 70 chain stitches loosely once again, and then skip the next 49 stitches on your bag. Once you have worked your next 70 chains, you can skip 49 stitches on the top of your market bag. You're then going to, into the next set, stitch, single crochet, and then single crochet into each stitch all the way back to your first stitch in this round. So just single crochet into each stitch all the way back. Should be a total of 15 stitches. When you come back to your first stitch, you can join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. And you're all set to begin the final uh, few rounds of your market bag. Now for the next five rounds, for rounds five through to nine, you're simply going to chain one single crochet into that first stitch and then single crochet into each stitch all the way around the top of your market bag. So for this first round, you're going to single crochet into each of the single crochet stitches. When it comes to your handles, you're going to single crochet into each of these chain stitches all the way across your handles and then continue single crocheting around. So work five rounds of single crochet stitches join at the end of each round, chain one, and continue on. And then once you've done that, your granny square market bag is complete. You can fasten off, weave in any ends, and then enjoy your bag. So I'm going to leave it off there, leave it for you to finish your final five rounds. And uh, I look forward to seeing on social media your finished bags. You can tag me on Instagram, Facebook, um, other, elsewhere, TikTok, and uh, just let me see your finished product. I love to admire them. And until then, I look forward to seeing you again next time for another great crochet pattern. So thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and I'll see you later on. Happy crocheting. Bye.